So the marker panel in Basehead allows us access to the markers that are stored within an audio file. So Basehead allows us to add and edit markers and also supports markers that have been added by other third-party programs such as editors like Wavelab. A number of doors also support the creation of markers, which Basehead can also read. So markers can be used for a number of different reasons. Um, we can use region markers, for instance, to highlight a section of audio within a larger sound file that's of particular interest. Uh, we can create some seamless loop points uh, so that uh, for ambience, we can just continuously loop a point of a file. Or we can just simply add in some editing notes or some comments or even some ratings for a particular type of hit or sound. Uh, the way we use markers is going to vary depending on each individual uh, and it's a, it's, it's a very useful tool to sort of wrap your head around. So to access the marker panel in Basehead, we just simply click the markers tab here and we're presented with a list of markers, uh, the marker types that, uh, that are supported and in the waveform here we will see the different markers laid out if we've got some markers. Um, the only thing would be to check that you don't have hide markers enabled in the waveform options. Uh, hiding the um, markers obviously removes them from the waveform. You should still see, if you're using one of the latest versions of Basehead, you'll see the uh, list of markers supported in the, um, in the marker list. So the types of markers that are supported by Basehead are uh, what's called generic Q markers. So these are the orange markers here. Uh, we've got region markers. Now the region markers are the purple markers. Now these are designed to highlight just a region of sound. Uh, this will be a start and an end point and uh, is typically used to just highlight a particular area of a sound file that's of interest. Uh, we also have then the loop regions, which are blue colored regions. And these, as the name suggests, are designed to be a loopable point within a sound file. And then we have the sync point marker. Now the sync point marker is designed to be used with applications such as Cubase, Nuendo, Pro Tools, and soon Reaples also support this as well. Uh, adding a sync point into an audio file allows the audio to be imported directly into the timeline of a supported door uh, using either the import feature or the spot to track feature and will synchronize the audio to the sync point marker. The difference between how the data is stored, so the thing to keep in mind with marker data is it's stored directly within the metadata of a file. So marker data is not actually stored in our database. Um, one of the benefits with this is if we make changes in a third party application to markers, we don't have to rescan the database or rescan the file or anything like that. The data is actually pulled as soon as we select the file. So it's kind of a live update as soon as we select a file. If you want to view the data of the, um, of the markers, you can view this in the metadata of the file. So if we open up F3, for instance, we've got a few markers here. So if we press the F3 key, what we're looking for is the Q chunk in the metadata. Uh, for sync points, if I just quickly add a sync point into the, into the file here, uh, sync point data is not held within that Q chunk. So if I, I've now added this sync point marker here, if I open up the metadata again, uh, we'll see that it hasn't created a, an additional marker. Uh, this is held in what is called the audio sync point metadata within the IXML data chunk. Okay, so looking at the markers panel, uh, we have a list of our markers here and uh, selecting any of the markers here will start playback from that point. So selecting a marker, uh, your standard generic Q marker will start playback from that marker point and will continue playback until we hit stop or until it hits the end of the file. Uh, sync points operate in the same way, just simply plays back from the marker sync point. Uh, loop regions will uh, loop around continuously within that looped point and the region is simply a start and an end point so it will play just that particular region of audio. So what we can also do is if we select any of these markers down in the waveform display here it will actually play that marker as well. So we can actually click it in the marker list or we can select the marker itself within the, uh, within the waveform. Now, if we want to rename any of these markers, it's as simple as selecting the marker and then just clicking the name field and we can punch in a brand new name. 
Uh, we can also adjust the start position of the uh, marker points in the same way. So if we know how many uh, seconds that we need to adjust to offset a particular marker point, uh, we can enter that in manually as well. Uh, now deleting markers is as simple as just selecting a marker and hitting the delete key. Or we can go down to the waveform display and if we hover over a marker, we can see that there is an X button and if we click that, it will delete that marker point. Now any markers that we've already got within a sound file can be easily manipulated. So in the same as we do within a door, uh, we can grab the entire marker and shift it. Uh, we can also grab any of the end handles and shift those in or out, depending on how we need to resize it. Uh, when we're using the loop brace, for instance, we can resize the loop brace to exactly where we need it. And uh, then we can create a marker at that particular point as well. So let's have a quick look at adding a marker in a wave editor and uh, seeing how that is imported into base head. So we'll just select a new file here. And uh, what we're gonna do is open this up in our wave editor. So I'm using WaveLab. Uh, if you've got a wave editor set in, um, uh, in base head, you just press the W key and this will open it up in, in your wave editor. So if I just press W here, so it's opened it up in WaveLab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a simple loop region at the end here. So if I choose the loop marker in WaveLab, this will create a nice little loop at the end. So obviously I'd spend a bit of time, figure out exactly how I want this to sound. So if I save this now and simply switch back to base head. So all we need to do is press the F5 key to refresh our audio file. And now we'll see that we have the loop point imported here. So let's look at adding some marker points to a sound file. Before we get started with adding marker points, there's just a couple of things to point out. Uh, we've got this right and clear button down here. So the clear button will clear all markers from our waveform so that we can redo them. Uh, and the right button will save the metadata directly to the file. So it's a, basically a right action to save. There is an auto write function as well. So in the waveform, options, we've got the option here to auto write markers. So with this option selected, if we start creating markers, such as I create a, uh, a loop point here, you'll see that uh, it has automatically updated those markers within the sound file. So if I click away and click back, that marker has saved automatically. So obviously now if I deselect de the auto write markers, what I wanna do now is delete this marker. Now, if I don't click the right button, then I have not deleted that marker. So this is more of a safety type of feature uh, to be able to make edits and make changes. So I can make all the changes on screen. I can test it out. I can play the file. I can see how they sound. When I'm happy with the result, I then need to click write and that will update the markers into the sound file. That would be the one thing to keep in mind is if you're working with the auto write function, it will automatically make your changes as you make them. This means that if you do make a mistake or you accidentally clear the markers or whatever, then those changes will be reflected straight away. If we deselect that option, then we just make need to make sure that before we select the next file that we do write those marker changes. So it's always a, a good habit to go back and check that the markers have actually been stored or, or changed within the file, depending on which way you wanna, wanna operate. So I'm just gonna clear all of this and write those markers. So I'm not going to auto update markers. Now, one other small tip would be, if you're like me, uh, sometimes you forget to hold down the modifier key when trying to select a portion of audio. To uh, select a portion of audio without zooming, so see if I try and select a portion of audio, it automatically zooms in. Uh, we can actually hold down the modifier shift and then select and it will highlight a region of audio without zooming it. Uh, but if you like to be able to just simply highlight sections of the audio without always zooming, you can disable the zoom on selection by disabling the option uh, to zoom the waveform in the waveform options. This will now cause a selection to just select the waveform instead of zooming it. 
So let's look at adding the different types of markers. So first of all, we've got the generic Q marker, uh, which we just simply add at the cursor position by pressing the M key for marker. Now, if we want to place markers whilst the playhead is playing, we can actually trigger the playhead to start playing. And at the point where we want to start inserting markers, we just hit the M key. So this is really useful if we're reviewing a particular recording and we want to add some markers for attention, uh, but we don't want to continuously stop playback. Just hitting M will insert a marker. And then if we need to, we can grab it and drag it around where we need to. We can also insert the uh, marker by placing the playhead manually at a specific point. So if we hold down the control key and then click exactly where we want the playhead to be, that'll place the playhead without triggering playback. So if we don't hold control, anytime we click in the waveform, it plays back from the point where we click it. So holding down control, we can click here and then press M. Now there is also a shortcut to this. So if we hold control and shift and then make a click, it will insert a marker at that particular point without having to do the two steps. Next, we have the region marker. So the region marker is designed to just highlight a particular region of a sound file. So again, we can have as many regions or loops or uh, cue markers as we want in a sound file. Uh, to insert a region, uh, we can simply click the region icon here and uh, that will insert our markers. So we can click these icons here instead of using the keyboard shortcuts. But the keyboard shortcut for inserting a region is the same as inserting a marker. We simply highlight a selection and then press the M key. This will insert a region marker. Now, if we wanted to create a loop point, so a loop and a region are pretty much the same type of thing. Um, only difference is loops are designed to loop endlessly. Uh, to highlight a loop region or a, a loop marker, we do the same thing. We select a, uh, a section of the waveform and this time we just hold control and press M and that will insert a loop marker. And lastly, we have the sync point. So if we want to insert a sync point, we simply hold down Alt and then click in the waveform. So wherever we need to set a sync point, we can just hold Alt and select the waveform or we can place the playhead by holding down control and selecting the sync point option. And that is pretty much the marker panel in Basehead.